And, you know, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece, is what I would say to you. I think people are expecting masterpiece. Don't expect masterpiece. Just get something down on the page or on your laptop or your desktop. Yeah. And you can edit it and mold it like clay afterwards. That's why I think people think too much when they write. Because I don't, I don't know you that well. We're going in cold. T set us up, uh -huh. and uh, yeah. So just tell me a bit about yourself first. Okay. Nothing crazy. Okay. Uh. Just so you know, we just have a conversation. Nothing, nothing fancy. Nothing crazy. Omid just stands there. Okay. And uh, <laughs> we're just gonna talk about your book and about okay. your your story. Okay, that's exciting. Should I prop my book up? Somewhere? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Here, I'm gonna yeah. prop it up here, and then we're gonna. Okay. We're gonna talk about that afterwards. Okay. So yeah. tell me, tell me a bit about yourself. Uh, Were you growing up in Edmonton? Yeah, raised here, yeah. born in England. I'm dual. Yeah. So I have family over there, and so do you go back there a lot? Yeah, I'm going back there more often now, which is good. Nice. Yeah. Is yeah. that because of the books, or is that just it's, it's com combination, combination of many things? So the publisher is based in London. Yeah. A lot of family in London, also Dobby. So that's Midlands, where I was born, and I spent some time there. So now I vastly back and forth. Yeah. And I just finished a master's degree in English, so I um, went through an American university was that for that. university. So how did you get into that? Because I always, like, you've gone back to school. Yeah. I always ask a lot of people, what got you to go back to take that degree? What was the reason that you wanted to get it? I always wanted my degree in English. Okay. My yeah. undergrad is in sociology, the minor, double minor in French and English. But, you know, for reasons we won't get into a lot of yeah. reasons. <laughs> I didn't stay with my English major and I switched to sociology, which was okay. But my passion was always literature and English. Always literature. So, you know, I finished it, got it done. But I thought, you know, I always wanted to get my degree in English. Yeah. And I just, you know, I was coming out of the third. Well, I'm better now, but I was just battling cancer twice. So yeah. a lot of health issues, brushing up against death. I promised myself if I ever survived... I would go to grad school. And so, so when I was well it. enough, I, I did. Yeah. What a story. What a story. Thank you. So did you take that? Did you take the degree online afterwards? or did it's you combination go? of both. You have to go in real time, face-to-face -face for courses for about six weeks. Yeah. And then the rest you can do online. So it's both, both worlds, online and then present face-to-face -face with people, which I prefer more. But with the online aspect, it makes it cheaper because yeah. you're paying in American dollars. Makes and the exchange rate is not great. Yeah, no, it's not good right now at all. What? So, so you you've you've battled cancer, you've overcome, and you just released your newest book of yeah. the Sisterhood series. Mm -hmm. So I guess we should sound the same. Allison Clark today. Allison, you are an author from Edmonton, Alberta. Yeah. Uh, you just re released your third book, mm -hmm. Circle of the Sisterhood mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the book, talk about what it took to write the books. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to do a marketing book right now, and I'm having mm -hmm. a tough time because it's it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You've written three now. Take us through that because it's crazy, right? It's mm -hmm. and it's been a it's been a process you've been going through. Yes, Take us through yes. that. Well, I do research for my books, even though it's fantasy. But I think the main key is focusing and shutting off all your social media and all that stuff. All of so all of the noise, all yeah, the distractions, yeah. get rid of it. Shut off, yeah. And then you can focus in on yeah. getting it done. Yeah. And I find walking really helps. So I okay. walk a lot on the River Valley trails and stuff. And walking outdoors helps to clear the mind. So, 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 is that, so is that your trick to get rid of writer's block? Go for a nice, well, go for a nice walk. Not a trick. I love walking. It's my exercise anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I get extra benefit out of it. So, yeah. I like being out in nature and hearing the birds and seeing the squirrels and the chipmunks doing their thing and... And the bunnies, yep. and, you know, snowshoe hares, and this is kind of exciting. And it's in the city. You don't have to go very far, which is kind of nice, right? Yeah. Well, we have a beautiful river valley here in yeah, Asia, too. Yeah, that's right. So you can get out and just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. What, what is your trick? Because give me some advice now. Give me some advice on writing books. What is your trick to get it done besides 
just that focus? What was one thing you could tell another author that will help them get over the edge and get their book finished because maybe they've been working on it for a while? No trick. You just gotta do it. There's no trick. There's so just no... just get down and grind. And <laughs> yeah, get it done. yeah. Because people think it's instant and the books will write themselves. You just gotta put in the effort. And I find a lot of people don't want to put in the effort. They go watch TV. They want a book, but they and, don't want to put in what it takes. Hang out with their friends and they do. Well, you're not writing. So it's, it's like yeah. you gotta write the book. And you know it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. Is what I would say. To you. I think people are expecting masterpiece. Don't expect masterpiece. Just get something down on the page or on your laptop or your desktop. Yeah. And you can edit it and mold it like clay afterwards. That's why I think people think too much when they write. Mold it like clay. Yeah. So once you get your ideas on paper, you're able to mold them together and yeah. formulate. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Formulate the story. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So now let's take it to the next step then. Let's take it to the Sisterhood series. Mm -hmm. So the first book was called Sisterhood. Correct? Yeah, that's right. What was the inspiration for the book, and what took you to, to getting it done? I think just reading, because I always loved books and fantastical ones, too. Yeah. So I read, like, Journey to the Center of the Earth, you know, Jules Verne, yeah, when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. Uh, Miss Pickerel Goes to Mars. I never heard that one. It was an older one. I haven't read that one, but... Well, yeah, we well, can even read it now, yeah, you know? It's just course. cool. So she was, like, senior citizen age, which went all these adventures, and one knowledge she went to Mars, and there are pictures in there. It's really cool to see women yeah. as architects of the narratives of these guys all the time, you know, and... It's getting better, but, you know, when I was younger, there weren't a lot of female protagonists. But, you know, I, I read Nancy Drew and Anna yeah. Gables, and so, like, we had a little bit of that in there, but we need a lot more. So I read books like that with strong, intelligent female protagonists and yeah. fantasy sci-fi. I read The Wizard of Oz, some of the books in that series, um, C.S. Lewis's Narnia series, or some of that. Tolkien, I've read a little bit. I read The Samarillion, which is like a prequel to the whole trilogy. I've yep. read that, and it was quite delightful. I haven't yet time to tackle the books or tomes. Yeah. It took you a while to read. Yeah. So eventually I will. I've seen all the movies, by the way. I've seen all the movies and all that, but I should tackle the books eventually. But I did like The Samarillion because it was like, it reminded me a lot of the Bible because a lot of like Genesis stories about the, the origins of everything and the origins of these creatures and mystical beings and what happened here and all these worlds were created. And I like that kind of stuff. So the Cimmerillion was, was really good for me to read. And, and so did that, did you take that forward and take some of that inspiration into the Sisterhood series? Or was Not it just really, no, inspired was you to write? No, I read it afterwards really. I just read. But like I think like Wizard of Oz, I think sci-fi, the things I read when I was younger definitely inspired me. So yeah. I love it. Yeah. So then what is the Sisterhood series for, for the audience that is is gonna go look up your books on Amazon afterwards? What is okay. the Sisterhood series? Take us through it. Okay, so the Sisterhood series, well the first one, the Jazz is the first one, is um Opie is a daughter of a sorceress. Yeah. And her best friend's a dragon named Ori. And they go on adventures to save the universe. And that's book one. And, and then they meet all these mystical creatures, beings, like unicorns, this, that, selkies, and so on. And they all form an army of light to battle the, the, the army of darkness. It's quite exciting. Cool. So that's kind of what they're doing for the first one. And then if I can get into the second one, because it's a trilogy now. And Are you going to write more books? Before I go, is it yeah. is three done? Is it a trilogy? Or... You don't have to give away any, any any hints here. You don't have to to give it away. But is it is it done now, or is it is is there more coming? There's a potential. I'll okay. say there's a potential for more books, but going in on in a different direction. There's a potential, but right now focus on this. But there's a potential. All right, so more prequel or or yeah, after story. It could be a potential, definitely a potential for something else down the pipe. All right, so that was that. There is a little <laughs> hint there, but okay. So now circles the newest one. Yes. Um. The, the the trilogy comes to conclusion. I haven't read yes. your books yet, so I'm gonna have to get them, and then yeah, we'll have to, to we'll get them displayed here. Yeah. What is, what was, what did it take to get this last one done in the trilogy, mm -hmm. and taking it kind of forward now? And and again, don't give any give away any hints mm -hmm. for people that are gonna read it. But what is what is the whole trilogy come together, and what's it mean? Well, okay, circles a culmination of this trilogy. Um, basically, in this book, 
the sisterhood, and it's again a combination of different mystical beings, creatures. So you have angels, you have sulkies, you have unicorns, dragons, uh, wyverns, all coming together again. And in this time, we're saving all different worlds. So, and in this one, um, human beings have to be involved. So mortals have to be involved in this fight. But I also chronicle other people. I chronicle the importance of libraries. The Library of Congress is featured, uh, like, like in Book 2, Racy, and, and the Library of Congress is the world's largest library. And I've been there. And all my books are there now, which is kind of exciting. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, it kind of, I vacillate, uh, circles a lot more international in scope. The first two are too, the future of London, some of this one's even more international. So I feature places like Ireland, I feature Edmonton, so I feature Old nice. Yeah. I feature University of Alberta. Really I, cool. Yeah, I feature London, I feature Dobby too. So it's a global thing. So I think this is where my readers are global. So I have a fan base here in Edmonton, but I have fans in England. In the states, the kind of all over the West Indies, all kind of culminating. So it's kind of exciting, yeah. Well, you told me that you're going to UK for a little book yes. tour coming up, right? Yes. So yes. talk about that a little bit. I'm very excited. So my publisher, Little Bird Publishing House, she's doing a, um the second book convention called Chapter dot com. Yeah. In London at St Mary's University, that's where it's going to be, and it'll be a culmination of readings and workshops and panels and so on. And I was a panelist last time. So it's just good to come out and see people. And in different genres, all these authors from different genres, different worlds. So some do fantasy, some do romance, some sci-fi. I do both worlds. I do sci-fi and fantasy in my books. Because I've been influenced by both. I guess more from what I've been reading growing up. And I also love Star Wars. Oh, also man. Galactica. Star Wars, Star Wars comes Galactica. up again. Yeah. Galactica. <laughs> Old school and new school. Yeah. I finally watched the new school. It took me a while. Well, 15 years later or something, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't matter. I like the new school too, but I love the old school because I grew up on old school, but I love both. Yeah. And so I love sci-fi too. And so all those passions and loves manifest in the books because it's part of what I like. So. so are you excited for Star Wars Episode Nine then? You know, the funny thing is, is this has come up in, in a couple podcasts. So it oh. seems to be a recurring theme that people are getting excited oh. for the last Star Wars. So are you, are you excited? What do you, what do you I'm very excited. Well, I, okay, I Have like, you looked up any of the theories yet? Not a no. lot. I don't okay. want spoilers, but the one before, the one coming up, yeah. for me, I really liked it. But I know there's two camps. Oh. One was more like like and the other one kind of hated it. It's either they love it or they hate it. <laughs> I loved it, by the way. Yeah. I thought it was interesting and original what they did with Luke. Yeah. I mean, I should say much. I, I, hopefully people saw it already. I, know, <laughs> I, but... think, I think everyone's seen it. <laughs> It's, so, <laughs> I, I loved it. I mean, the yeah. whole thing, I, I liked all of them. I keep saying yeah. that is, is they all had their piece. Even the prequels, people, a lot of people don't like them. Yeah. I like them, right? There was, yes, there's flaws, yes. but there's flaws in every movie that yes, you watch. So yes, I, I liked them a lot. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. December, we get to watch the last one. I'm very excited. So I don't know if I can do a Princess Leia because, you know, I met Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Because I go to comic Con. What was that like? So she was so delightful and nice. And she had her dog with her. And her dog has an entire entourage. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. But she was so delightful. And I went to her panel and talking about life. And she's just very authentic. And actually, I told a girlfriend, we got to go see Carrie Fisher. This might be our only chance. And I didn't think she would die. No. I just thought she would never come to Edmonton again, right? Yeah. And when I heard she passed, holy. And her mom just passed like what, a few weeks later or something. So, oh, no. It's no, very no sad. Good. She was very a young, sad. young woman, really. She wasn't, you know, she's only, what, maybe in her 60s? That's still pretty young. Seriously. Crazy. What do you do? But she was gracious. She was kind. And that meant a lot. I met the, the who played oh, all these names. Oh, I can't remember. Lando Calrissian. Yeah. And Lando. he's in the new one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The guy played Lando Calrissian. I met him too. Because I remember him with the old ones and the new ones. And this is interesting to see everybody. But yeah, it was cool. And I met the guy who's the voice of C3PO. I can't remember his name right now, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I met him too. And the, the highlight was Carrie Fisher. And then another, I love Marvel. So I met Stan Lee. And that was very exciting. I met the man, the architect of the Marvel Universe. So yeah. exciting. So I enjoyed that. And he was just quite, it's quite delightful, too. 
Well, and Marvel. Then, you know, Wade, who just passed, and it was his time, I guess. But he was prolific. He was still writing, putting out novels until just before he passed. He was on a mission. And I admire that. I really do. He could have retired and, you know, continue to enjoy the golden years. He didn't have to put anything else out. He was, I was following him. But he kept him. going. He kept publishing books and stuff still. I think that's quite an easy at 90 something. Following his passion. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so is that what you're going to do? You're going to keep writing then? Well, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm metamorphosizing, doing different things. And uh, so I might do more books. And there's another project I'm working on, which I'm not going to mention. Okay. Because I'm not, I don't know what's happening with her yet. Yeah. So I'm, I'm keeping that zipped. And then I'm doing different things. And then I'm going to go into a whole new trajectory after that. So kind of got a, kind of a bit of a road map in my mind of what I want to do next. So. Beautiful. Okay, now another question that relates to, to people looking to publish their first book. How did you find your publisher? What was the what was the scope of querying, doing your query letters, and getting that going? Because that's one of the most challenging parts for a new author to get over that that hump to get their book actually yeah, published. Yeah. So you, know, you don't have to give away too many secrets, but what was what was that process like, and how what would what advice would you give to people that are querying to get their books out there? See, I did it in a different way. I did querying. I got into her. Okay. But I was in a grad school program, and it was a master specializing in children's literature. And our director... Um, so networking. Told, yeah, networking yeah. through the program. And she would give us calls for submissions for different things, and one thing led to the other, and that's kind of where it ended up. But, you know, for us, a lot of us, um, school, either undergrad or grad will take us there. I have a cousin who did a undergrad at McGill and music jazz program and it's the same thing for him like the the days where you just went to the club and you got a gig and an agent from the record company saw you when you got your record deal those days are kind of over for well, a lot of the, the everyone's getting gigs, discovered online now yeah it's like all the gigs of clubs that you used to play at and that a lot of the clubs are closing down and unfortunately Edmonton is an example of that a lot of clubs I knew closing down closing well, where can you play where can you get your exposure? Where can you do your networking? You have to kind of think of things in a different way now. It's a whole new trajectory of how to do things. And school for a lot of us is like that. Now I'll count one story. I went to another Comic Con. Now the actress, I think it's Haley Atwell, I think. Agent Carter? So that's still part okay. of the Marvel Universe. British actress. And she told us she had no connections whatsoever in terms of Hollywood, acting, anything. So she went to, I think, the London School of Dramatic Arts to get her and her networking. That's how she got in there. Unfortunately, her show was canceled, but I'm sure she's doing the projects anyway. Yep. And I think she was the latest one in the end game, and that's all I'm saying. I think, I think it was her, if I have that right. I think they brought her back for that one. But I'm sure she's doing other projects. So it's another example. School, um, yeah, and just, just getting involved in different projects with people. Writing projects can help, too. And I think just thinking outside the box. And if people tell you got to do it a certain way, just do it the way that's best for you. Yeah. I think that's good advice. I think, because I think so many people put all of their effort into querying mm -hmm. and it goes nowhere in comparison to there's more than one method to get published. Like you said, you networked, right? Yeah, yeah. There's people that can attract attention online. You can yeah. do it through querying. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a combination of everything that's the best. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go through it soon too. So I'm going to get yeah. to take some of that advice yeah. and apply it. Mm -hmm. I like it. No, that's, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any quotes that follow you around that mean a lot to you? Do you know of any or do you have your own that's something <laughs> that, that plays... Mm -hmm. That, that that plays together and, and kind of something that you follow? I think Toni Morrison, I think she said, if you see a book out there that you would like to read, it doesn't exist, write your own. And that's one. And that's, there's no truer way, right? Yeah. If you, and, yeah. and that's what you do with Sisterhood. Right? Yeah. Strong female characters. You went yes. out and wrote what you yes. wanted to see. Yes. And it appeals. And yeah. That, it then appeals to an audience. Because yes. you know someone else was thinking the same thing as you. Yes. I yeah. like it. Let's, uh, yes. yeah, so what did, uh, tell me something else. What else, tell me something interesting about Allison. Not much to say, really. I like different things. Um, Any hobbies? 
Ah, I love movies a lot. So I'm looking forward to John Wick, Chapter 3. You know, I've I'd love to be Keanu Reeves. I'm not sure it's going to happen because I don't think he does Comic Con. Yeah. But you, you know what? You're, the, to meet. you're not the you're not the first person who said that. <laughs> yeah. I heard it last week that someone said that they were looking forward to John Wick three. Yeah. So, what what is it about John Wick that people fall in love with? Oh man, I have so much to say. Okay, I have <laughs> the first two on DVD, the Blu Ray. Yeah. So excited. Okay, I just like the premise of the storytelling. Okay, it goes back to the writing. So I don't know if you remember Ebert and Siskel and Ebert. No, the I movie don't. Movie critics. You should no. you should Google them, okay. watch them, their stuff on the YouTube, or whatever. And then later later it became Ebert and Roper. They were two movie critics I really really admired because they said it's all about story. It doesn't matter about genre, this and that. If you like the movie, then it's a movie for you and it's good. And they weren't snobs about what was good or not. It had to be art house movies or this and that. They liked whatever. As long as the story was good. And they also said the foundation, any foundation for a movie rests on the writing. Without the writing, you have no foundation and your movie will fall flat. And always remember that, t- telling the audience that it's about the writing. And I, know, I think it was Ebert, I think he went to Pulitzer for his column. can't remember which paper, American paper. So he was a writer as well. But just remembering, it all starts with the writing. And without that, you don't have anything. So now with John Wick, it's this very good storytelling, world building. The story, it's simple, but it's not, right? And I'll just say a little bit for those, you know. If you, I mean, but the story the is sto- what you fall in love with. Yeah, but the story is simple, but it's not. What's the story, okay? So I can see a little bit. The, the wife passes away. We don't know how. He had his past. We later thought he was an assassin. And she gave him this dog posthumously, right? And so it happens to the dog, as I'll say. And it takes him this whole new trajectory back into his past life. So I think it's a simple story, but it's not a simple story. Because, like, he's starting anew, but then the wife passes, and then it turns a totally different corner. And then he goes back in this world he never thought he'd go back into again. So I'm not giving him all the way. That's the first one. And so the storytelling is so good. You think, okay, this happened, that's it. But it's, it's simple storytelling, simple story, but not. Because it leaves all these different things. And I like the world building and the gold coins and the this and that in different worlds. Like, wow, this whole underground, underworld thing. And this is great. <laughs> and, and, and then the martial, martial arts and this light, it's like, it's like choreography. It's like The Matrix. The, the guys, the main director, I think, was a stunt director from The Matrix trilogy. So the people from The Matrix were on these John Wick movies. And, it, and it, you can see it. You can see the influence with the... The choreography, the, 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 the martial arts, the junior thing, the fights. It's like, it's like dancing. It's like like music, really. Shh. Yeah. And then with everything, shh. And yeah, a lot of shooting. But, but just the movement, the martial arts, shh. It's like, wow, and wow. And um, this, and the lighting is just really beautiful. And the kind of the bluish light and everything. And, and, and the actors are so good. All these are top A actors. The guy from The Matrix is in the second one. The guy who played Morpheus, he's in the second one. So is he in the third one? I don't know, but he's in the second one. So you're seeing people from the Matrix, hey, I remember him, you know, and so he's got all the people from the Matrix in it too. It's kind of neat. But I just like the storytelling and the world building. And I read that the first John Wick, they didn't think it would make a lot of money and it worked in this thing. Also, they took it to the major studios, they all said no. So they had, to, they had to find another way to do it. I had no idea. They it's poo-pooed, just they poo-pooed it. It's like, like they had to do it so, some other way to get it done. It's yeah. just like you said with with getting a book published. You have to find a way. You gotta you yeah. gotta go out and find a way. Whether you're yeah. building a movie or a book, yeah. And you're querying yeah. or you're you're sending your yeah. your your clips in, right? You have to yes. find a way. Find a way. The cool yeah. thing about John Wick and the cool thing that applies to all movies is mm-hmm. we engage with storytelling. Yes. We engage with the stories that yes. we write and that we read and that we watch. Yes. It engages our emotions. And mm-hmm. we often say that when you engage those emotions, solve mm-hmm. problems and tell stories, that makes for the best marketing. Mm-hmm. Because there's no selling in that. You just engage with it. Yeah, yeah. On, on the deepest level. Yes. And I think that's really cool. And I mean, you're a storyteller at heart. I can Thank tell you. that, Allison. <laughs> it's very really exciting. I love. It. I want to meet Keanu Reeves. I don't know how well, possible. I don't think we're gonna. Uh, maybe we'll get him through to talk to Jamie, but I don't. We'll, we won't hold our breath on that one. I uh, 
I thank you for coming out. I well, thank enjoyed you. this discussion a lot. Thank you. And uh, we're excited to see. I'm going to have to get your books. We're going to okay. feature them here. Okay, great. And we're looking forward to anything else that you yes, publish. Yes, Thank you for having me. I had a good time. <laughs> Thanks, Allison. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.